best job of lettering I ever saw in my life. Boy, I ain't saying much. That'll be ten dollars, please. Yes, sir, you're a real artist with that stuff. A real artist. Ten fish. Uh, I'll mail you a check tomorrow, pal. I'd rather have the money today. Well, you're never gonna get any place if you don't trust people. You know, I've been around a long time, buddy. You don't belong here. You really belong on Broadway. Yeah? Yeah, and I think the war could do you good. I take it off for five bucks. Pretty, huh? No, but you might do. Are you available? Oh, for you, anytime, Miss... Uh... Lawrence, Kathy Lawrence. Kathy, you're my first client. Shall we celebrate by my carrying you across the threshold? Oh, no, it's such a nice day, I think I'll walk. You take the comfortable chair. Thank you. I think you'll do fine. Well, you're a doll to say so, but just what do I do fine? I'm a reporter on the San Francisco Tribune. I'm down here on a story and I need some help. Well, I'm your man. I shadow, investigate, prove and disprove suspicions and dance divinely, all at reasonable rates. I can't pay you a fee. This changes the picture. But I'll make you a business proposition. Shoot. I presume you know this person. Sure, Judge Finley Drake. Or ex-judge, since every cop in the state started looking for him. I think I know where he's hiding. You realize there's a $10,000 reward riding on Judge Drake's head. How would you like to have half of it? What's your angle? I have a pretty strong hunch that the judge is hiding in a local private sanitarium, the La Siesta for mental cases, run by a Dr. Clifford Porter, former state medical officer and a good friend of Drake's. Are you good at hunches like this? Well, actually, this is more than a hunch. That's Madge Bennett, the uh, judge's girlfriend. Again, I say. That picture is 10 years old. Everybody thought Madge left San Francisco with a judge, but I saw her in town a few days ago and followed her down here. Last night, she went to the sanitarium. Why don't you give this information to your paper or to the police? Well, because I can't prove that he's there until somebody actually sees him in the place. And where do I fit in? I want you to go in as a patient. You want me to say I'm crazy? It's the only way you could get in there. Honey, I'm not that hungry chance to make a lot of money and put the judge and his friends in jail. No, don't go away mad, but I'm not getting myself locked up in any nut house on a hunch. I see. Well, now that our business is over, how about you and me doing a tour of the local pool rooms? <laughs> so sorry, pool isn't my game. and You're not my man. I'll find someone else. I come bearing news and apologies. All right, come in. I decided to check on your girlfriend just out of curiosity. Oh, really? 
She went back to that sanitarium again last night. And she didn't go in through the front entrance. I knew you'd check on this. That's why I left the picture in your office. Well, what do you know? Say, I bet that's why you left that scrap of hotel car in that stationery. So I'd know where to find you, too. I suppose that makes you a clever detective, figuring that out. I've, uh... I've come to accept your proposition. What's our first move? We'll need a close relative to ask for your commitment. I'm sure my relatives would be delighted, if I had any. Are you married? No. Would you mind being married to me? Twist my heart. Um, the point is, we'll just say we're married to get you into the sanitarium. Well, okay, if we can make a deal for after I'm out. This is strictly a business proposition. Your part in this deal is to play a mentally unbalanced husband. Who's always kissing his wife, in public and private, all the time. No, we can figure out a better act than that. Oh, no, I think we'd both be awfully good in our parts. Mr. Stewart, I'd love to spend the rest of the day trying to outmaneuver you, but we have work to do. What's this? Research. You have to decide what kind of a mental case you're going to be. A paranoic, a schizophrenic, a manic depressive. And then we'll have to decide on your name. Well, what's wrong with the name I've got? Ross Stewart. I think it's kind of pretty. Well, it's a beautiful name, but with your retiring personality, there's just a chance that somebody in town might know you. So I think we'd better change it to something simple like um, Harry or... Horton. I like names that go together. Harry Horton. All right, Mr. Horton. And you can be an unemployed salesman. Well, you hit the nail right on the head with that unemployed. Now, tell me, Mrs. H., what's supposed to be the matter with me? Well, that's what we've got to figure out. I thought I'd take you downtown to the state psychiatrist, tell him that you've been acting queerly and ask his advice. And you'll have to know how to act so he can recognize the symptoms. Well, now, here's one I kind of like. The symptoms of the manic depressive consist mainly of emotional disturbances, depression, anxiety, elation, rage, a variety of happy and sad moods. You think you can be sad for a minute? Oh, I can be very sad. I can even be unattractive. You know, you could tell him that I, I beat you one minute and kiss you madly the next. I'm not so sure you're not really insane with that kissing fixation of yours. Maybe you've got a better way to go crazy. Is there something troubling you, Mr. Horton? Something you're afraid to tell your wife about? Is there something troubling you, Mr. Horton? I got nothing to say. It was her idea to come here, not mine. We want to help you, but you must cooperate. Nobody can help me. Nobody can help anybody. I don't know what to do for him, Doctor. He's getting worse all the time. Just what would you like me to do, Mrs. Horton? I don't know. I, I wanted your advice. Could you bring your husband back here Wednesday at 10 o'clock? I suppose so. Why? I'll examine him and make a report to the court. If the court alienists concur, they'll recommend that he be confined to the state asylum for treatment. Oh, no. No? What? I... I, I wouldn't want him in the state asylum. I thought possibly a private sanitarium. Private sanitariums are an expensive proposition. But if you feel you can afford it, by all means, place him in one. Most of them are very good. How would I go about it, Doctor? Is there, is there any way you can help me? Certainly. I'll write a letter stating that, in my opinion, your husband needs professional attention. A letter from me will uh, more or less force them to admit him immediately. Private sanitariums are very crowded today. Miss Cook, would you come in, please? I want to dictate a letter. I'm sure in time your husband will respond to treatment, Mrs. Horton. How much time, Dr. Porter? How long do you think you'll have to stay here? That's impossible to say. But you must be prepared to leave him in our care as long as necessary. I hope he'll be allowed to move around to be with the others. He'll live quite a normal life. Our patients are allowed to mingle freely in routine, everyday relationships. Uh, about the cost, Doctor, I can't afford a private room. 
If we have a bed open in a three-man ward, I'll assign him there. Oh, that'll be fine. Pops. I want you to be good, dear. Do everything they tell you. This is Mr. Hobbs, one of our attendants. Uh, Mrs. Horton? Mrs. Horton. And her husband? Mr. Horton. Uh, Mr. Horton is going to be with us a while, Hobbs. Uh, fix him up in Ward 10. Yes, sir. Will you come with me? I think you've got to be for the world. Well, here we are. Here's your bed. Uh, you hang your clothes in your locker here every night. I'll have to take your tie, everything you've got in your pockets. You can keep the cigarettes. What about matches? How do I get a light? Well, you can only smoke in the day room. We don't like patients to have matches. Give me your suspenders. How do I keep my pants up? Sorry, we have to take all these things away from depressives. We don't want any accidents. Mr. Purvis, uh, Mr. Horton. Hmm. Another poor fish caught in the porter net. Don't unpack your bag, Horton. Get out of this vile hole while you're still able. Why do you want to make trouble for yourself, Mr. Purvis? I keep telling you, you're going to get into trouble if you don't keep still. He looks strong. Put him to work with you, Hops. Yes, sir. Horton, ask the noble doctor if the patient helpers get paid for their work. It's part of the treatment to keep you occupied in some useful task. Treatment? Making the patients work saves hiring janitors. Mr. Purvis, I've warned you before. If this keeps on, it may become necessary to transfer you to the locked ward. Well, I'll have to take your shoes, too. I'll bring you some slippers. Whose bed is that? Mr. Quist. He's a very nervous fellow, likes to be let alone, so don't bother him. He ought to be left alone. What about our nerves? Wait till you try to sleep tonight. Wait till you try to sleep. Why don't you take it easy? Why don't you have backbone enough to do something about this place, Hops? You're going to make trouble for yourself. You know what a rotten disgrace it is. Why don't you tell somebody on the outside? The people on the outside aren't much interested in us on the inside. Inmates or attendants. Hops, what's wrong with the new guy? He's a depressive. He'll be all right after a little rest. <laughs> I'll make sure he gets a good rest. Given a chance work workout? I've told you a dozen times not to abuse the patients. Shut up, you screaming monkey. Cut it up. Quit hitting him. Get back in bed. You too, Purvis, or you'll get the same. What kind of a joint is this? Look, no boy. Let me give you some advice. Don't stick your nose in what's none of your business. 
I'll get back in bed. And stay there. the one you've got to watch around here. You came here to be cured, you're more likely to be killed. You can come here anytime you're not supposed to be working. Cigarette? Thanks. Good day, sir. I wonder if by chance you're a chess player. No, I'm afraid I'm not. Oh, that is unfortunate. Uh, please pardon the intrusion, sir. It's okay. Poor Topper's been trying for three years to get somebody to play chess with him. Three years? He's been here that long? What's wrong with him? He's a firebug. Nearly burned up a whole neighborhood once. Otherwise, he's okay. Used to be a pretty big businessman, they say. How long have the rest of these men been here? Oh, three months to a year or more. You won't be here that long. I don't think there's much wrong with you. I, uh... I met another attendant last night. Larson? Just stay away from him all you can. Mind your own business around here, and you get along better. That's all I've heard so far. What kind of a joint is this? I, uh... I gotta get back to work. Where do you think you're going? Just looking around. What's up there? A locked ward? That's where you'll wind up if you don't behave yourself. Go on back where you belong. Go on back where you belong. Kept you so long. You had to stop by one of the wards. Frankly, Judge, I'm beginning to resent your sending for me at all hours of the day and night. After all, I'm doing you the favor. You'd still be a small time quack if I hadn't given you a break. I'm more than repaying that break right now. I'm risking everything keeping you here. It's a short risk. My boys will be here as soon as things cool off. 
Suppose these men of yours are picked up by the police and talk. The men working for me can't afford to talk. I hope you're right. Mighty fine cigar. Don't be so appreciative. With the money I'm paying you to stay here, you can afford a truckload of those cigars. Well, here's to good luck. To both of us. There's a rumor that he was seen in Florida. Florida? You mean maybe I'm in here just for laughs? No, no, the police say it was just a phony. Anyway, Madge Bennett came here again Thursday night. She had a briefcase with her. Obviously, she's his outside contact. I've got to spot her and find out where she goes. You know, if Drake's in disguise, it may be kind of tough to recognize him. I thought of that, so I brought you a present. I didn't know you cared. I thought if you kept looking at it, you could see through any disguise. You're a real smart girl. Good afternoon, Mrs. Horton. Oh, good afternoon, Doctor. May I see what you have in your hand, please? No. Oh, let Dr. Porter see it, dear. He'll give it back to you. Really nice picture, Mrs. Horton. Thank you, Doctor. That was quite a performance. Your talents are amazing. Thanks. Do you think you've seen all of the inmates? I've covered the place pretty well. All except the locked ward. They haven't let me in there so far. When can you get a look in there? Well, give me time, honey. You know, they don't exactly have conducted tours around here. I know. Anything I can bring you the next time I come? A couple of steaks. Oh, you don't look as though you're suffering too much. Come to think of it, neither do you. And you're not double-crossing me on the outside, are you? Running around with other men? That is none of your business. I'm your husband. <laughs> Only in here. I'm kind of getting used to the part. You're not just gonna run out on me when this is all over, are you? We'll talk about that when it is all over. You'll be a rich woman. Five thousand dollars. I've been looking a long time for a rich woman. I've been looking a long time for a rich man. No, oh, money isn't it. Hey, wait a minute, that's me. I'll be worth five grand myself. I know. All right. Hmm. You look only half worked to death. How do you like our little rest home now? Well, like it's overtime. Purvis. What's the locked ward? That's supposedly for the violent patients. Anybody up there now? A couple of violents are kept there all the time. Under restraint, they call it. It's too much trouble to try and cure them with any kind of treatment. Have you heard of the isolation room they've got there, too? Bare room, padded walls. They throw you a blanket, you sleep on the floor. Oh, yes, this is a very high-class sanitarium. Fine care and treatment you get here. You pay extra well to be treated like a dog. Try and complain about it. Try and protest about anything. And what do you get? I'll tell you what you get, that extra special treatment. They throw you in a lock. I'll I'll make sure to keep your mouth shut. <laughs>
what happened. Larson told me he got in a fight. Yeah, a fight with Larson. He didn't do this. Who then? Larson dragged him out of here. Just forget about it. Just mind your own business and you won't get into trouble. You're a decent guy, Hobbs. Why do you let things like this happen? There's nothing I can do about it. You can quit. You know this is bad. Why do you stand for all this? Wait a minute, Hobbs. What are you so scared of? You ask too many questions. What are you doing here? Waiting for my wife. She's coming today. This is night. Go on back to your bed. Gotta see my wife. I might miss her. Go on back to your room. Any better? A little. Today's visitor's day. Anybody coming to see you? Huh. Think they're gonna let anybody see me like this? You ought to demand your release from here. You could go someplace else. <laughs> I have a hundred times. What about your wife? Can't she get you out? They've got her convinced I'm dangerous. She believes them? They tell her it's better to keep me here than to go through a legal court commitment that'll publicize the fact her husband's crazy. You just relax. It'll take me a little time, but I'll get you out of here. Chin up. What happened? Larson hit him. Why? He tore up some paper in the day room. Somebody ought to tell this kid's family this is no place for him. He doesn't have any family. You better get along. Your wife's waiting for you. Hi. Well, you're beginning to act like a husband. Grim place, but just stick it out a little while longer. I'll I... stick it out, don't worry. I saw Madge Bennett come in last night. She went up to the locked ward. I tried to follow her, but one of the attendants caught me. What happened? Nothing. I gave him some silly talk and got sent back to my room. Oh, you've got to be careful. Hey, don't tell me you're really beginning to worry about me. Of course I am. 
I've been watching Madge's rooming house. So far, there's no sign that she's getting ready for a trip. Good. All I need here is a few more days. We're really getting close to home, baby. Oh, I hope so. I'm getting nervous. You've got to get well soon, dear, so I can take you home. That's the mug that got me the other night. I think maybe we're getting in too deep. I don't think it's worth the risk. You're not forgetting that five grand, are you? And the story that's going to make you famous. I don't care very much about the money or the story anymore. I just don't want you to take any unnecessary chances. Don't worry, baby. I want to be around to collect. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Yes. Baby, the next time you show up here, I'll know for sure whether Judge Drake is on the premises. Hops. Why isn't Topper cleaning up the locked ward? Oh, I needed some help. I'm the one who needs help. Send him upstairs. Topper. I think you better go upstairs. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Topper. Yes. I think you dropped these. Yes. Thank you. Burn yourself? No, no, I'm, I'm okay. Well, come on, we have some more work to do. You got drunk and fell asleep with a lighted cigar, that's what happened. You think I'm going to stand by and let you ruin me in my place? I tell you, I wasn't smoking when I went to bed. How could you remember? You drank a quart of whiskey. That's my business. You're being well paid for the little damage you I'm done. not being paid nearly enough to end up in jail. I made a deal with you, Judge, for one month. You've been here five weeks now. If you're not out of here in another week, I'll have to have more money. You're going to start bleeding me, eh, Porter? I'm running a great risk in furnishing you with the safest possible hideout you could have. I'm entitled to additional recompense. I'm not at all certain I'm as safe here as you seem to think. What are you talking about? Who's that patient? What patient? The one who helped put out the fire. Horton. He seemed very much interested in me. He's new here, isn't he? Yes. His wife had him committed with a letter from the state psychiatrist. I couldn't turn him down. I don't like the way he looked at me. You know, I caught Horton on the stairs here the other night. What night? Last Thursday, the night I brought Miss Bennett up to see you. And come to think of it, it happened once before, too. Look here, Porter. If you've let someone come... Look through Horton's stuff in his room. 
He'll be at lunch. I'll be in my office. Didn't find much. Just the usual stuff. Nothing here will tell us anything. Horton's record seems fairly authentic. Traveling salesman, unemployed, married four years. He's married to a good-looking dame. How could we have been so stupid? This Horton is either a cop or a newspaper man. If the police are watching the sanitarium, we're all finished. You'll never be able to get out of here without being caught. Calm down. We've got to figure this thing out. What is there to figure out? He knows you're here. It's only a question of time now. You're a stupid man when you get excited, Porter. Horton didn't know for sure that I was here until the fire a little while ago. He hasn't been able to communicate that information to anyone yet. His wife will be here to see him this afternoon. Obviously, she can't be allowed to see him. She's a part of this scheme of Horton's. She's the one we've got to worry about now. I was crazy ever to let you come here. I'll lose my place. Go to jail. You won't lose a thing. All you have to do is get rid of Horton. I'll get out of here tonight with Madge, and there's no way for anyone to prove that I was ever in here. How do we get rid of Horton? Well, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. The champ could take care of him. That's not a bad idea. You could make out a report that he was attacked by one of the violent patients and died of the effects. That's murder. I didn't bargain for murder when I went in this with you. You have a choice between that or jail and ruin. We'll have to wait until tonight, when all the visitors are off the premises. Better have Horton locked up. You'll have to give his wife a story why she can't see him today. Maybe we'd better lock her up, too. Don't be ridiculous. That would really tip our mitt. Just stall her. I'll handle it. Get those things back to Horton's locker. We don't want him to know yet that we found him out. something? Yeah. Uh, we found one of the patients with these. Porter says they're yours. Yeah. You got to keep your stuff locked up around here. I can see that. I'm going to need you for a few minutes, Horton. Saturday, I got to change my clothes. My wife's coming. You have an hour yet. I got to get the locked ward cleaned up. Come on. Start washing these walls. I want you to clean up this room. I need some help if I'm to be done in time for. You'll have plenty of time. Stop your crabbing. You're not going to miss anything. Porter would like to see you, please. Please. Mrs. Horton, Doctor. Good afternoon, Doctor. Hello, Mrs. Horton. Won't you sit down? Mr. 
Is something wrong, Doctor? I have some most regrettable news. Your husband has had an accident. He was apparently wandering around the building last night and somehow got into the locked ward with the violent patients. What happened, Doctor? He was attacked and pretty badly beaten. Believe me, Mrs. Harden, we are extremely sorry that this has happened. I can't understand how he got into the locked ward without being seen. May I see him, Doctor? That wouldn't be advisable, my dear. He's suffering from a shock and shouldn't be disturbed at all. Oh, just to look in on him. To be quite frank, Mrs. Harden, he's been rather badly hurt. As soon as his condition warrants, I'll call you and you can see him. All right. You'll let me know tomorrow how he is. I'll call you myself in the morning. Let me say again that I'm extremely sorry that this has happened. However, I'm sure that he'll come around all right. Thank you. Say, Larson. Horton hasn't been in here all day. He's not in his room, and I thought it was... He's all right. Never mind about him. Yeah, but... When are you going to learn to stop messing up this place? Don't you ever hit him. I'll take care of what he does. You bet you will. I'm getting sick and tired of this kid of yours messing up the place every day. I don't know why Porter let you both stay here. From now on, I'm going to hold you responsible for anything he does. Don't you ever lay a hand on my boy again. Yeah? What can you do about it? You're no good, Larson. You'll get yours someday. You'll get yours. Larson, come with me. Mrs. Horton has been very nicely taken care of. I told her that her husband was attacked by another patient last night and his condition was too critical for her to see him today. Are you sure she believed you? Positive. She seemed quite stunned. You know, I'd like to find out who or what Horton is before you take care of him. Let's get him in here. After all, we're not keeping any secrets from him now. I won't either. I don't want any rumpus raised. I wonder how Horton knew you were here. Do you think he found out about Madge and followed her? I don't think so. Madge is a pretty clever girl. However, I don't see how that could do him any good now. I must say you're being mighty calm about it. I think we're in hot water up to our necks. Up to whose necks? Sit down, Horton. Whatever your name is. All right, who are you? I don't get you. You will. Larson. Let's not waste time. We know you're not really here as a patient. Who are you? Who sent you here? I'm Harry Horton. My wife sent me here. I'd advise you to tell us what we want to know. Otherwise, things may become very unpleasant for I you. I still don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that picture of mine on the back of your wife's photo? I told your wife this afternoon that you've been very badly beaten by a violent patient. Ain't she going to be sad when she finds out you die from your injuries? Keep your stupid mouth shut. Who are you? Who's in this with you? The entire police force, Porter. I think he's lying. You'll find out any minute. My wife must have reported my supposed accident by now. Apparently she didn't. She left here over two hours ago and we haven't heard any more about it. You will, Porter. You will. And if you boys are smart, you won't make it any tougher for yourselves than you need to. Accidents are quite likely to happen in a mental sanitarium, my friend. This is absolutely the most fantastic story I've ever heard. It's incredible. I suppose it is. You've made a fool out of me. Involved me in a situation that is most unethical. And now you want me to help you. We felt that Porter might be suspicious unless we came to him with some professional opinion. You thought nothing of degrading my professional reputation? 
I'm sorry, Doctor. But if Judge Drake is... If he's in there, has Horton or Stewart or whatever his name is actually found Judge Drake in there? I don't know. You're accusing this Dr. Porter of a criminal act. You have no proof. Stewart may actually have been attacked by a patient. I don't think so. I think both of you have acted stupidly and rashly. Well, all right, Doctor, but that isn't the point now. If you won't help me, I'd better go to the police. I don't think the police would barge in on a private sanitarium merely on your suspicions. They'd let themselves wide open for a civil suit. I think you're needlessly worried about him. I'd advise you to go out there tomorrow or the next day. Take him out of the sanitarium and forget the whole thing. Tomorrow may be too late. Well, frankly, Mrs., I don't know what I can do for you. You'll have to excuse me. It's after six, and I have a dinner engagement. You guys kidding? Leave him in there. He ain't gone any place.
got a gun at your head. Do as you're told. All right, all right, what do you want? Pull over to the curb when you get past the main gate. Stop the car and throw the keys in the back seat. If you don't struggle too much, the ropes won't hurt you. Found a guy in here as a patient looking for the judge. The judge is getting packed. But we got everything fixed so nobody gets in a jam. Miss Bennett, Judge. Yeah. You're late, Madge. Did Larson tell you what happened? Put your hands down. Get Harry Horton in here right away. I don't know what you're talking about. Get him. Larson. Yes, sir? Bring Horton in here. Dr. Porter said to leave. Bring him in here. Easy, Tank. Easy, boy. Horton. Horton. Easy, Tank. Hurry up. Make it all right. I can make it, baby. All right, Larson, open that door. Wide. Get going, Judge. Larson, unlock that one. Stay where you are, Judge.
All right, Porter, drop the gun. Okay, honey, come on. All right, bud, drop it. I'm Ross Stewart, private detective. I imagine you know my friend, Judge Finley Drake. I certainly do. Over by the wall, Judge, with your hands in the air. Looks like you had quite a party. We did indeed, and we couldn't be happier that you boys were invited, but who... Uh, I called them. You, Hobbs, you're a man of action. I never thought you had it in you. Neither did I. I'd better call my paper. He's a nice guy. Hang on to him. Operator, long distance, please. Operator, long distance, please. I'm sorry, darling, my job. I never like to start anything I can't finish. Maybe neither do I. Excuse me. I never did think he was crazy. Oh, my God. 